Hi and welcome back. So we all just had a small summer vacation and that also counts for me. But I'm back again and this is a new video about threat modeling. Recently before the vacation I uploaded a video about risk assessment which I will link in the description just down below. So before we start with threat modeling I want to make sure that you understand that threat modeling is the first thing you want to do before you go ahead and do a risk assessment. However, it is more than possible to do a normal risk assessment without doing a threat model. But if you want to do it the right way and you don't want to miss any threat, threat modeling is the way to start and then you do multiple risk assessments for each threat you have. So if you have one threat, you do one risk assessment, if you have two threats, you do two risk assessments, and so on. So, what is threat modeling? Threat modeling is a process by which potential threats such as structural vulnerabilities, or the absence or appropriate safeguards can be identified, enumerated, and migrations can be prioritized. So this is a very funny picture that I found on the internet, and I read the, the story behind it. However, the point by this picture I want to give to you is that your threat model is not my threat model. Basically it means that maybe you live across the street and maybe you have another threat or other threats than, than I do when I live on the other side of the street. What really happened here is this is not a real shark, this is just a plax plastic shark and it was placed there, not by accident but by will. However, it was to prove a point. So no matter where you live, even though that you have a store, a company, just on the other side of the street of your competitor, for example, this doesn't mean that your threat model is different. It doesn't mean that it is the same. Now, what does it mean? It basically means that you need to sit down and look at what is your threats and figure out how to mitigate against them using risk assessments. So there are three things, like overall things you need to focus on when doing a threat model. Assets could be stuff like computers, cloud data, and so on. Attackers, well, that is an attacker. Could be many different things, insiders, hackers, hired people. It could even be a hurricane. Attack vectors. Now, that is the way you're gonna get into the system. For example, if you go through, let's say, the cameras and you find uh, some network connection there you can use as a jump off point to take the next step, well, that is your vector through. With these three, you can create a threat map. And with the threat map, you get an overview of which threat you have. All right, so let's start by talking about assets. Assets could be stuff like databases, credentials, networks, buildings, documents, or even a rocket at NASA. So I put out some, some numbers on some picture that I found on Google. And basically what you're gonna do is when you create a threat model, there's a slight chance that you actually need to um, use some graphics in the way because it kind of explains things better than text but I, I'm gonna show you some ways to do it on a later stage in this video attackers could be like your typical hacker the typical hacker could just be anyone sitting you know at a coffee shop from home you know behind a VPN using Tor maybe you know, any anyone basically it could be a staff member being incompetent or otherwise this, this is a funny one. So would you like to hire staff that is incompetent with IT if you have an IT business? I want to make this really clear. It is impossible to hire only people that are extremely good with IT. Sometimes you need to hire, let's say, a secretary. And let, let's just be honest, the secretary education where I live in Denmark do not have, do not have any heavy weight on IT and how to use it. They might use a system or something. They they learn by you know following an instructor, but it doesn't mean that they have a good IT understanding or how to use 
an email account wisely. For example, think about phishing emails, which I also have a course on. If you look at the description below, I'm going to try and link it as well. Computer being compromised. Now, this is a very interesting point. It could be infected with, let's say, a virus or malware, a worm. It could be infected with um, ransomware. It could be a bot in a bigger or greater botnet. However, you don't really know. So a compromised computer could be an attacker. Even Google could be an attacker because Google are really good at browsing the internet, which means that what the Google bot is actually doing, or one of them out of thousands of them all doing the same thing is scanning. They are basically scanning your web page. So we accept that as okay traffic. So when Google wanna learn about your website, they are kind of vulnerability scanning it in a way, but not as a hacker, but as an information storage way, which is why we call it a search engine. So how would a search engine be great if they don't know what your web page is all about? Think about it. There's a way to use Google called Google Talking. And we can search for passwords or hidden path or hidden URLs on web pages that, you know, companies like, wow, did, did they really find that on Google? Yeah, they did. So I don't want to encourage you to do anything illegal. However, if you have a web page, try and use Google a bit and see how much they actually save. All right. Hackers don't have to be malicious to be a threat to your system. That is a really good point. So let's say a hacker scan your website, just like Google. Is that malicious? It is not malicious. So is, is that okay to scan your web page? You know, depending on your use case, depending on how they're doing it, how much are they pushing on the walls? basically means how much traffic are they sending to your server? Does it, does it, you know, make so much noise that your server cannot run? No, think about it just for a moment. Okay. Attack vectors could be many different things. Basically it means the methods of, of obtaining an asset to achieve my motive. So there's a small story here. I'm not going to read it, but if you want to pause the video right now and read it, please do so. So you read the text, I'm gonna continue. The very first example I'm gonna give you is called the Batman's cave. There's something that I found in, in a slideshow that I really liked. So credit to the, to, to, to the person who made this. I don't know who it is, I just found it. However, I really like this example. Think about this way, Bruce Wayne is Batman. This is Batman's cave. And this is Batman threat model, just the basic one, okay? To keep it simple. So to the left, we have the Batcave. We have Alfred, we have emails, and we have texts. Okay, so we have some controls here, which is not a part of the three, you know, wall things in the, in, in, in the threat model. However, you can add controls if you wish to. But what we do have is assets, attackers, and the attack vector. The controls is basically some security messages that we put in front of our assets to safeguard them, okay? It could be anything like firewall, encryption, hidden location, security systems, and so on. So we have the police. Now, we have low risk, medium risk, and high risk down here. So we can see dotted line, thin straight line, and thick straight line. The police has a low risk potential of actually finding the bat cave because you know it's batman and the police they're not that clever so they never find the bat cave so there is another way that they might find some emails because they the emails yeah they're a little better with that but it's not that potentially difficult to read emails or even decrypt them then we have the joker and that is the villain the joker have a really good chance the medium risk to actually find the bat cave the Joker can also hide and conceal, so you can get behind, you know, the security systems. The Joker is really good at finding Alfred, it's a high risk. For some reason, the villain 
in the superhero movies, just like the Batman movies, the Joker can always find Alfred. And this is probably what he does, gonna kidnap him and lure in Batman. We have a journalist here. Right. And journalists, they, they're just like, yeah, they don't know much, but they fiddle around and find some email, low risk. They maybe find some text messages. Can they go through encryption and stuff? Well, maybe they cannot, but you know, you never know journalists these days. They, they do many things. So if you look at this picture, I hope you understand what this means. You can do a threat model just like this if you wish to. Um, it's just a bit too graphic for my taste if, if you're gonna say something. So what you basically could do is take, take a pencil on a piece of paper and draw something just, you know, to have some, you know, blueprints to, to, to work from. There are probably some programs you can use, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not knowledgeable about a good uh, threat model of threat map generation programs. However, you know, you could probably use Visio if you wish to. If, if you're really good with paint, you can go ahead and use paint too. I wouldn't recommend it, but you could do it. So let's look at a more realistic example. This is a generic organization. Let's just call it the organization. And we have some assets, digital assets, assets and physical assets. So now we see another way that we divide our assets into different groups. Could you do even more groups? You know, well, I don't know. I, you know, <laughs> I, I have no idea. If I think physical and digital is the two types of assets there are. Um, however, you could do something like human if you wish to, but that is kind of physical. But you know, depending on who you ask, humans are not that physical, which doesn't make sense because we're right here, right? <laughs> okay, so um, I put in another one just to 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 give him a spice called motivation, and motivation is just a thing you can put in between to to even more make it visible for the, for the readers or the viewers of this threat model, uh, which um, kind of threats could be, you know, should, should, we be, should we be aware of? So we have some untargeted attackers and some targeted attackers, which again pulled out two different groups. The targeted is uh, staff, espionage, nation state and script kiddies. The untargeted is the incompetence of the staff, vulnerability scanners, and web crawlers. Now, I don't want to, you know, we gotta we gotta keep a tight, you know, grip on the on the web crawler thing, because we don't really know what they're doing, right? What, what are they lurking around doing to web page? Sometimes a web crawler can trigger our intrusion detection or intrusion prevention system or even firewall because it's doing things that potentially could look malicious by sending a lot of traffic, hitting on a door saying, is this a URL you know, is this a URL, do you have this URL, maybe you know this URL, you know, trying to scan our site. The motivation could be corporate espionage, data harvesting, ransomware and botnets. So this is a great exercise for you to sit down and say, well, what is the actual, mm, Let's go back to Batman's cave. What about the attack vectors? Okay, so the attack vectors in this kind of threat model is kind of mentioned here by the motivation the way. Think about it, how would the incompetent staff, uh, the untargeted one, just like they're just uh, pushing buttons and then boop, oops, oh, something blew up. I didn't do anything wrong. Typical incompetence staff, okay? so. They press a button, you know, do something, click a hidden drive, get access to something, and oops, they delete something, or oops, oopsie. You know, I wouldn't say it's any any of these, but you know, is it highly likely or is it very likely? These are the questions that should be answered in the risk assessment. And you probably always probably already follow me, but with this here, I'm gonna sit down and do a risk assessment for my documents, emails, my Slack, my phones, my servers, my laptop. 
could could phones, servers, and laptops be 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 one final? Well, I would probably say phones and laptops could be one risk assessment because it is kind of user interface, user friendly device, and the servers is something like separate. You know, I want to stick to that. The documents and emails and the Slack, I would say, hmm, maybe do the uh, Slack by itself and the email and documents as one risk assessment. And look at the motivational attackers and say, well, what is the chances for corporate espionage and so on. This is another one called the server app. And I'm not gonna go too much into, into detail with this one because you probably already know what I'm gonna say. We have some assets, motivation, untargeted and targeted attackers. Again, if you wanna look at this picture for a while, pause the video and unpause and continue. And again, we have a cloud app just for you to see that we have some other things that could be in, in the assets list, release repository, CICD. If you know what that is uh, standing for, it is uh, uh, continuous integration and continuous deployment. All right, so the actual um, report part. So if you wanna um, uh, create a report and or you are going to create a report this is going to be a long it's been a long job right it's been a long one so assets you know you should probably stick to describing your assets as a chapter for itself using some text a target should be described too you know with some text you know in in, in their own chapter attack vectors should also be well documented and written so if you combine the three, it is 100% allowed to draw something on paper using icons to, to give a better total overview, use your mobile phone to take pictures or camera. Now, this is something you could do um, if you wish to. What is important is, and I wanna make this really clear, in my time using uh, computers, I kinda only valued the reports um the guides that made things clear to understand if i can understand something really fast really easy now i'm not saying that so something complex should be short and vague i'm saying something complex should be easy to understand but it's okay to take time to understand more of it because it's complex okay so of course there's a limit to how easy something that is really complex could be but try to be as simple as possible keep it simple stupid principle whenever you want to explain something to someone else think about the average joe your mom your dad your friends that are not it professionals how would they like to see it how would they like to have it explained uh yeah and please remember that you know what i just showed you are just examples with graphic um you need to write some actual text for every asset motivation on target and target attackers and so forth there's a tons of different threat models on the internet i'm pretty sure you can just go to the internet right now to google and type threat modeling and hit enter and you'd like boom have a lot of them and many of them would be kind of different we had different you know I use assets, attackers, and and, 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 and and the vector part a lot, but I've seen many different ones that have made it even more complicated, even more difficult to understand. You know, just make it simple. Whenever you're gonna present some, something for your boss or and in your security group, this is something we need to be aware of, make it easy to understand. Then everyone will understand it. It's gonna be easy to implement, a lot easier. And that is the way to go in my eyes. Um, and please remember that uh, if you're gonna use threat model first and go risk assessment after, which is my final advice for you, uh, I have a video here on YouTube about risk assessment where I explain how to do a really simple risk assessment method and even more simpler version I have two different versions so if you wish to do some class exercises i even wrote something here and this is where i work however create a simple fit map for your company or where you work and stay in the groups and present your threat model after to a teacher 
So I really hope that you liked my video. And if you wish to, please subscribe to my channel, like the video, write a comment. I will write back to you and comment on your comment or even answer your question if you have any. So until now, I want to say have a nice day and bye bye. Thank you.